Bun găsit, prieteni! Eu sunt Tudor Curtifan, suntem în cadrul unei ediții speciale a emisiunii noastre Obiective Euro Atlantic. Ne aflăm în ambasada Ucrainei, vom discuta despre situația din, din Ucraina, vom discuta despre război hibrid. Sunt, sunt aproape 2 ani de la începerea invaziei în, asupra Ucrainei de către Federația Rusă. Vom avea și o discuție interesantă cu privire la perspective privind integrarea euroatlantică a Ucrainei și, desigur, și relații bilaterale dintre România și Ucraina. Alături de mine în această, în această dimineață, domnul ambasador, excelența sa, Prohopciuc Ihor, ambasadorul extraordinar și plenipotențiar al Ucrainei în România. Your Excellency, hello, thank you so much for having us here in the uh, Ukrainian embassy. It's an honor and it also it's a pleasure for us to be here and thank you for accepting this interview. Well, thank you very much for uh, visiting the embassy. I'm very pleased to, to receive you and uh, to answer the question that uh, you may have. So, uh, Your Excellency, it has been almost two years since uh, Russia launched its unprovoked and illegal invasion against Ukraine. And uh, these days, many official, NATO officials, uh, talked about a possible future war against uh, Russia, NATO against Russia. Even in Romania, I know you, I, I bet you know there is a huge debate uh, after a statement of our chief of state. I would like to ask you, Your Excellency, what do you think you consider the biggest risk for Romania, Republic of Moldova and all the region in a worst case scenario if Russia would advance in Ukraine? Let's hope no, but let's take the worst case scenario. Um, well, thank you for this question. I would like uh, uh, to put uh, my answer in a broader geostrategic context. And first, I would like to mention that uh, today we have ended uh, 713th day that uh, the full-scale Russia's invasion against Ukraine lasts. But in fact, we're also approaching the 10th anniversary since the time that Russia invaded into U the Ukrainian territory. And men let me remind that the invasion started in February of 2014, when uh, the Russian forces appeared uh, without any insignia uh, on the Crimean Peninsula. This was the first instance of attempted annexation of a territory of one country by another country since the Second World War. And it shows the, the gravity of the violation of international law that was committed by the Russian Federation 10 years ago. And they did not stop in Crimea. Yes. They moved into Donbas. And they started the hostilities in the eastern parts of Ukraine. And then eight years later, they started a full-scale invasion into the Ukrainian territory. So this, this shows also the evolution of the aggressive action that was taken by the Russian Federation against Ukraine. And what we have seen in the last nearly two years of Russia's full-scale invasion was the uh, systemic nature of gross violations of human rights, of torture, of uh, war crimes, of crimes against humanity, and uh, genocidal crimes. For Ukraine, it is an existential war. Yes. Ukrainians and Ukrainians are fighting for their right to exist as a nation and to also make freely their choices. But as we repeatedly emphasized, the stakes are much higher than Ukraine and they have global repercussions. It is a challenge of the Russian dictator to democracy and the democratic values of the European civilization. Uh, the neo-colonial ambitions of territorial expansionism stretch beyond Ukraine. And therefore, the outcome of this war will define the course how the developments will unfold on this continent in the current century for the generations. This is a real inflection point for all of us. So this, uh, the, it, it must uh, come as no surprise mm. that uh, there are emerging discussions about a, the likelihood of direct confrontation between uh, NATO and Russia 
if, if Russia, even hypothetically, prevails in its war against Ukraine. Russia can only be stopped by force. And if the aggressor is not stopped and pushed back in Ukraine, it will advance further. That's clear. And this poses direct military threats to Romania, to the Republic of Moldova, and to other countries. And therefore, the uh, assistance to Ukraine is in the national interest of this country and of other countries. As far as Romania is concerned, President Yohannis has made the point that helping Ukraine, assisting Ukraine, is in the national security interests of this country, and it is absolutely correct. Not letting Russia win the war is not a viable strategy. Ukraine must win this war. Okay. And uh, uncertainty and ambiguity about the objectives of this war would only be exploited by Russia in spreading its uh, own narratives. Are you sure your opinion this is an extermination war? And, and I think Odessa, Nikolaev and all the shore of the Black Sea, it's an objective, still a big objective for uh, for Russia. But uh, speaking about international help, uh, these days European Union has unlocked the 50 billion euros aid for Ukraine. And it's an important, it's a huge step. Also still are some problems with American uh, military assistance. As we speak right now, there are negotiations in the Congress between Democrats and Republicans. We will have, most of for sure, we will have a positive vote in the Senate. Problems maybe in the House. Um, is there a plan B if uh, military aid, American military assistance continues to be delayed, Your Excellency? Well, first let me say that uh, President Zelensky strongly welcomed the uh, unanimous decision by the European Council last week uh, regarding the uh, support to Ukraine as a demonstration of uh, unity uh, of the European Union countries on matters relating to support supporting my country. We have received a four-year financial support instrument that guarantees stable, long-term and predictable financing for Ukraine, which is extremely important alongside military support that we receive. This decision of the European Council last week, it also debunks uh, Kremlin's narratives about so-called Ukraine's fatigue yeah. in Europe. And this is also a very important political message. Second, as uh, repeatedly emphasized in Kiev, there is no plan B. Ukrainians are fully focused on plan A, and this is winning the brutal war unleashed by the aggressor, the Russian Federation, against our country. There is full determina determination to defend the country and the nation's freedom. But the delay in the delivery of military aid compounds the challenges that we face in connection with this war, and it increases the human costs, both at the front line, but also among the civilians who are subjected to constant uh, terror by Russian missiles. And I would say that a large component of the uh, military assistance that we receive is uh, air defense uh, systems, air defense yes. systems missiles, which are used to cover and protect the uh, critical infrastructure facilities in the country and also the uh, civilian uh, residences uh, in, many, in many cities. Therefore, we, we do hope that uh, a decision will be taken as soon as possible in the US Congress that will allow to unlock the uh, security assistance uh, to Ukraine. Uh, let's talk about uh, bilateral relations between Romania and, uh, and Ukraine. And I would like to ask you, what is the current situation of these bilateral re relations? Because we know we have an important strategic partnership and a dialogue on a security ag uh, agreement between uh, our countries. Um, first, let me say that uh, since the very first days of uh, Russia's invasion into Ukraine, uh, 
uh, Ukraine-Romania bilateral relations have been undergoing a transformative phase triggered by a, a very empathetic response by the Romanian nation to the tragedy of uh, Ukrainians and uh, also immediate response of the Romanian authorities with the purpose to help Ukraine yes. and Ukrainians. And uh, I want to use the opportunity of this meeting, of this interview, to again express profound gratitude from Ukraine uh, to this country, to Romanians, for the help and support they uh, extended to Ukraine. This is very much appreciated and will be dearly remembered. In 2022-2023, our countries have significantly increased practical cooperation in many areas. Let me just point out that uh, Ukraine and Romania played a decisive role in maintaining global food security by cooperation on matters related to the uh, export and transit of uh, Ukrainian agricultural products to the uh, world markets. We have uh, engaged very closely in developing uh, the uh, border infrastructure on the state border between Ukraine and Romania. We have increased the number of border checkpoints and have outlined also our plans for uh, further development of this infrastructure. We have developed very specific projects in the areas of uh, energy, digitalization, logistics and uh, transport. The second half of last year, 2023, was uh, particularly dynamic in terms of uh, our bilateral political dialogue. The visit, the official visit of President Zelensky to Romania, to Bucharest, yes. this was a historic uh, visit when the two presidents, President Zelensky and President Tihanis, signed a joint declaration, the most substantive bilateral political document in decades. And this is when they declared their shared vision of a strategic partnership between the two countries. Now, Kiev and Bucharest, uh, the diplomats, they closely work on developing a uh, respective document that would establish the, this partnership in relations between our states. Let me also mention that uh, Prime Minister Shmihal visited Bucharest in uh, August of last year, whereas in October, Prime Minister Chalaku visited Kiev, accompanied by a large group of ministers of the Romanian government. And it was then when the first ever in the history of our bilateral relations, a joint meeting of the governments of the two countries took place, where very specific projects of cooperation in different areas, again, were, were outlined. So I would say that we have developed a very strong basis for uh, intensive development of our cooperation for the benefit of Ukraine and Romania. Among the uh, most interesting areas, I would again point out to uh, the matters relating to energy and energy security. I think we have very good prospect for developing our cooperation, cooperation on matters of the uh, of, uh, defense industry sector. Again, this is the area is okay. where we have uh, where we have interest, but we where two of our countries have a lot of potential to join efforts in production of uh, the systems that will be in need for our military forces. Uh, in terms of our cooperation, I would also like to point out to the topic of uh, Romania's engagement in uh, reconstruction of Ukraine. Uh, last year, uh, in Romania, the Embassy of Ukraine, together with the uh, Ukraine-Romania Bilateral Chamber of Commerce, uh, launched uh, a, a Rebuilding Ukraine platform. Mm. Uh, three conferences were organized in the course of the year to bring uh, Romania's commercial circle, uh, circles, business circles, to explore the areas where, where they can do business with Ukraine. 
Uh, these efforts are supported by the authorities, by the government, by the prime ministers of the two countries. So I think that we will have a very good outcome of this effort in, in, in terms of uh, very practical engagements. So I think this is a win-win for Ukraine, for Romania, and I have a very, very positive outlook on the prospects of this cooperation. That's a very good news, Your Excellency. Um, Russian Federation is extremely active in hybrid war, in propaganda, in fake news, disinformation, and so on. Um, and it's taking advantage, Russia is taking advantage of different crises in Europe. I, I don't know, the protest of farmers, truckers, not only in Romania, in France, Germany, Belgium, uh, so on. But this year will be an important year in European Union because we will have elections, not only European elections, we will have a golden year of elections in Romania, four rounds of elections, we will have elections in the United States. So my question is, speaking about um, propaganda, protest and elections, are you worried that Russia will use all its hybrid warfare tools in order to influence the result of these elections? Well, based on the uh, past uh, track record, I think it must be taken as a given that uh, Russia will interfere and will try to influence uh, the electoral processes and uh, the democratic processes in different countries, particularly those countries where the uh, elections are due. Uh, Russia will continue to aim at uh, spreading fakes and uh, hostile propaganda, sowing divisions and uh, stepping up radicalization in uh, Western societies. Uh, after all, Russia produces fakes on an, on an industrial scale and they will continue to allocate uh, huge resources to make those fakes reach the targeted uh, audiences. So I would say that primarily it must be a matter of uh, concern of uh, the governments of the authorities of respective countries to take effective countermeasures uh, and uh, to, to develop them and put them in place. Uh, it must be a matter of uh, immediate concern to maintain the integrity of uh, respective processes to not, to not let Russians interfere. I would remember that uh, in uh, last year, in 2023, uh, we have observed a number of measures uh, taken by authorities uh, yes. of Romania uh, for decreasing Russian malign capabilities. And I would refer to uh, the closure of the office of uh, in this country and also the uh, expulsion of uh, uh, a significant number of uh, Russian so-called diplomats. Uh, these were uh, appropriate measures that helped subvert uh, Russians' uh, influence capabilities. Uh, the issues of uh, societal resilience are of course uh, uh, of top priority. And uh, I know that there are a number of uh, initiatives pursued by the authorities, by, but also by the non-governmental sector to, to, to make the societies more resilient to uh, outside uh, malign influence. So this yes. is definitely an area where which, which must be, which must be uh, further remain in the focus, an area where Ukraine has uh, developed quite significant experience, which we are also uh, ready to, to, to share with uh, our partners. Uh, my last question, Your Excellency, it's about integration of Ukraine into European Union and NATO and the assimilation of European democratic values. It's an objective for Ukrainian people and I'm sure this will happen. One day will happen in a way or other will happen. The Russian weapons cannot stop this. But what can you tell me about the current prospects to, uh, to the integration? Because it's an ongoing war, in a large scale war against Ukraine right now as we speak. Yeah. Uh, let me say that uh, 
Ukraine is very consistent in its, prog in its progress towards the uh, established uh, strategic goals, the full membership in the European Union and the full membership in NATO. Uh, we have proven, and the Ukrainian pr people have proven, that it is only for Ukraine and Ukrainians to uh, decide about the strategic course of the state and uh, about the alliances of the state. And they would not be stopped by uh, coercion and uh, military force from a big neighbor like Russia. It makes me recall that uh, the Russians invaded Ukraine launched a full-scale invasion yes. on the 24th of February, 2022. And it was only a few days later that uh, President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, together with the Prime Minister and the Chair of the Verkhovna Rada, submitted an application for Ukraine's membership in the European Union. Yes. So whereas the aggressor state intended to terminate Ukraine's progress towards integration with the European Union and NATO. In fact, it accelerated the progress. And since then, Ukraine has achieved first the candidate status. Yes. And then in December of last year, it was a historic decision taken by the leaders of the European Union countries to open accession negotiations with Ukraine and the Republic of Moldova. And this is the decision for which the Ukrainian people fight hard in this war, defending themselves, defending European democratic values, European democratic principles. And by, again, inspiring the people throughout Europe about the values of this union. Uh, I think that uh, for now we have we have well for now we have charted also how we see the further the further timetable and in fact yes. in fact uh, uh, it was uh, last month that uh, the screening process of the Ukrainian legislation was launched. This is part of our okay. further steps towards to, towards uh, formally launching the negotiations. Uh, there is full commitment on the part of the president and the government to uh, implement the outstanding part of recommendations by, of the European Commission uh, that are necessary uh, to make the next uh, step in the negotiation process. We very much hope that there will be a positive uh, assessment produced by the European Commission uh, expectedly in uh, March of this year that will serve as a basis for convening an intergovernmental conference to formally launch uh, negotiations on uh, one cluster. That would be uh, fundamentals uh, between uh, Ukraine and the European Union. We, we move alongside uh, the Republic of Moldova, so we also hope that a similar decision will be taken in relation to this country. So, for us, it is important to see that such uh, a conference takes place uh, before, uh, in the first six months of this, of this uh, uh, year, which would basically coincide also in terms of time frame with the schedule of uh, different uh, developments inside the European Union, particularly yeah. the elections to the European Parliament. Yeah. This is how we see it. We very much hope it will be possible to uh, adhere to, to, to this schedule. Uh, in relation to NATO, let me, let me uh, also emphasize that it is also the NATO membership that can provide reliable guarantees of security. Uh, we have uh, in the past, Ukraine tested different options. They do not work. Okay. So we have full confidence that it's also NATO membership that can provide for Ukraine guarantee for Ukraine security. But it's Ukraine will become a big asset for NATO because basically it will bring to NATO all its uh, military potential 
it will be uh, the, the potential of the country that was able to repel uh, the Russian intervention, the Russian aggression. And that means a lot, of course, in security terms. I would say that a decision uh, on Ukraine's membership in NATO is also extremely important in terms of putting to rest Russia's claims on Ukraine. Mm -hmm. As soon as a decision is taken on uh, Ukraine's accession, that will put an end to uh, contention that uh, the Russia sea is possible in relation to Ukrainian territory. Uh, that will strengthen, strengthen security for Ukraine, for this region, and for Europe. That will also strengthen the area of democracy and stability, something that we are all interested in. Uh, last year, during the uh, NATO Vilnius Summit, some important decisions were taken in relation to Ukraine-NATO uh, cooperation and, and future relationship. I would like to point out to this practical instrument of establishment of Ukraine-NATO Council, which Ukraine uh, used uh, uh, a number of times now after in the follow-up of uh, massive Russian attacks, be it on the port infrastructure in July and uh, uh, August of last year, or yes. massive missile attacks that were carried out by Russia on uh, the cities of Ukraine across the country uh, in the end of uh, December last year and January of this year. Uh, this is the, 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 the format that uh, allows to further strengthen uh, interaction and coordination between Ukraine and NATO and also leads us to the next stage in our relationship. We have our expectations in, the, in relation to the upcoming uh, NATO summit that will take place in Washington, Washington of this year. And uh, we do hope that uh, it will bring us closer to, to our summit. desired goal of uh, full membership in NATO. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. We wish you the best and good luck in your objectives. And thank you for sharing with us your ideas and for giving us this, this interview. And I'm speaking right now also in the name of our huge audience and thank you for this interview. Well, thank you very much for coming here. Thank you very much for putting these very important questions. And uh, let me again say that it's extremely important that we stand together, Ukraine, Romania, other allies, stand firmly together until the full victory of Ukraine uh, in this war, which we did not want. We did all we could to prevent this war. But when there is an aggressive regime that is bent on uh, expanding its territories, what we can do is defend ourselves, Infant. defend ourselves together. And I'm certain that we will win. Thank you so much and thank you for the support and assistance that has been provided, rendered to Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.